Monarch 2 recently presented and published is a very interesting study that although it looks similar to Paloma 3 and will look similar to Mona Lisa 3 when it's presented, is actually quite different. This trial randomized patients who were postmenopausal with metastatic hormone receptor positive breast cancer who had progressed on one endocrine therapy in the metastatic setting to receive fulvestrant with either abemaciclib given continuously for all the time uh, or fulvestrant with a placebo. The real differences in this trial, besides the CDK4-6 inhibitor, is the patient eligibility. So you couldn't have received two lines of hormone therapy, regardless of what those hormonal agents were in the metastatic setting. And if you'd relapsed on adjuvant hormone therapy or shortly after completing adjuvant hormone therapy, you also needed to go on the fulvestrant uh, treatment with the Monarch trial treatment as well in the first line metastatic setting. You couldn't get a hormone agent and then go on to Monarch 2. So that was different and also you couldn't receive any chemotherapy for metastatic breast cancer. So this group of patients were much less heavily pretreated than the patients in Paloma 3 and that will be less heavily pretreated than Mona Lisa 3. The reasons for this, of course, is they wanted to have their best shot at approval being the third kid on the block, and they wanted to look at a patient population who had very hormone-responsive disease. And in fact, they did, actually. They defined a group of patients who had very hormone-responsive breast cancer. So their actually progression-free survival in the uh, just fulvestrant and placebo arm is longer than that seen in any other fulvestrant trial because they picked a group of patients who were more like the patients who were treated on the Falcon trial, a non-targeted agent trial that looked at fulvestrant uh, versus an, uh, nastrozole in the first line setting in patients who'd never had any hormone therapy before. So Falcon is a very unique population. But Monarch 2 is closer to that population than it is to the population in Paloma 3. So patients actually uh, had a very good progression-free survival receiving fulvestrant and placebo, but it was markedly increased longer than we've seen in any of the trials with fulvestrant with the addition of abemaciclib. Again, because you started out with a very hormone-sensitive uh, group of patients, or their tumors are very hormone-sensitive. And the hazard ratios and the degree of benefit are similar to what we saw in Paloma 3. It's just the numbers are longer. So it's interesting, actually. It's told us not only that abemaciclib was highly effective in this setting, as we expected, but also that if you used hormone therapy without giving chemotherapy beforehand, you can actually keep people on hormone therapy for a long time. So I think that it actually supports the way many of us have treated our patients, which is that if you have cancer that's progressing on an aromatase inhibitor in the adjuvant setting or shortly thereafter, using fulvestrant combined with the CDK4-6 inhibitor is a great approach. You don't need to give those patients chemotherapy because you can potentially keep them on therapy for a median of two years. I mean, it's really quite uh, amazing. The other thing we learned from Monarch 2 was about the toxicity of abemaciclib. So they started out using the same dose that we used in the single agent Monarch 1 trial, but patients had a lot of grade 3 diarrhea, more than was really acceptable in this patient population. So we reduced the dose shortly after, after only a small number of patients had been randomized. And with that reduced dose, the degree of grade three diarrhea reduced down to about 11%. So that's actually seems to be much more acceptable. But it is true that in patients receiving a bemaciclib, you have to warn them about diarrhea, just like we tell patients about their count checks and all of that. It should be on the patient information that all patients receive before they take that first pill, because they need to have have Imodium or some other uh, loperamide, some other antidiarrheal agent with them. Unlike the drug neratinib recently approved, they don't need to take the antidiarrheal therapy before they even start, but they've got to have it with them because some patients will have grade three diarrhea. We know that to be the case, and so you need to take preventive, uh, you need to take medication as soon as you start having loose stools so you don't get into a bad situation for, uh, and you know, we often will check in with patients after the first few days just to make sure they're doing well.